What's going on guys? Welcome back to another Theory Friday this time. Uh, today we're going to discuss about the leaked clip of Ballora singing a really awesome song which is to do with the law, which is really interesting. But not only that, um, Scott did a troll teaser but behind that troll is a lot of lore as well. So we're going to discuss about that today but I'm not alone. Who do I have this week? Always you have Ryan. And other Ryan. Rasbowski. Ooh. And Shrek. Um, <laughs> okay, Shrek. let's go. So the first topic we're going to be discussing, guys, is the initial thoughts on Ballora's voice. Because this is literally the first time we've had proper voice acting, apart from, of course, the phone guy in a FNAF game. I mean, these animatronics are physically speaking, and it's kind of strange, but guys, what do you reckon? Well, can I just say, uh, the woman who actually voices over Ballora, her name is Michelle Moss. Uh, but she really, really needs to get into ASMR videos after this <laughs> Five Nights at Freddy's <laughs> sister location because it's very, her voice is very, very mm. soothing and that mm -hmm. is terrifying alone because it's like you shouldn't be relaxed in the situation yeah. that you're in yep. and I think that is what's going to create such tension in this game. Obviously, it's a ballerina, it's meant to make you feel good but oh god, it's going to be horrible. It is gonna be. It's, it's, it's the type of voice that has so much power over it without screaming or shouting. Like, you've all heard my videos. I shout and scream. That's how I get my power. But there is, like, it's so calm. I think that's the main thing here. The voice is gonna be so calm. It's, it's, it's got control about it. And if you yeah. look in detail of, of each line by line, which I'm sure we're gonna to go to in a second, it just it gives you a nice picture. It even gives her character and personality all within these um, few lines that we've got already. There's so much to talk yeah. about, but it's gonna be creepy as hell. Imagine sitting there in the office and you can hear this just echoing around the place. Cause if it's gonna be a yeah. large, quiet, abandoned factory, this is gonna echo and it's gonna sound incredible. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Um, a voice is kind of like hypnot hypnotizing to me. Mm, like, yes. like Ryan said, it's really soothing and it yes. fits the character well. Which yes. makes me even more excited for the other voice actors with for the other animatronics. Yeah. What yep. personality traits they will as well, what they will have because um, I, I can imagine Funtime Freddy being like proper like loopy and like yeah. yep. kind of like kind of like Patrick Star from SpongeBob yeah. for me. Yeah, um, so yeah, I'm really excited for what uh, Scott does with the voices. Yeah. How it brings out the personality of the mm. animatronics because we don't really get a, a personality from the animatronics in the past um, yep. because I think voices would fit well to bring mm. that out. Yeah, yeah, it's like, you know, we look at these animatronics and all we know them as is something to avoid, but it's like we don't have a chance to make a physical connection. I think yeah. the fact that Scott's actually given these guys a voice, I mean, for all we know, this could, this is like, it opens up so many possibilities now because it's not just a phone call now who's going to be feeding us the information. There could be contrasts, maybe phone guy, if there is going to even be one, tells us one thing. These animatronics were here telling us another thing. Yes. Uh, it might actually advance in the story. Uh, and another interesting thing going off of the fact how they might impact the story means that they probably have some kind of conscience. It's not just like an AI. Like when you listen to the way this kind of thing uh, speaks and what it says, it's very like a rhythmic, poetic, yeah. flowing mm. thing. Yeah. But then at the end, you have this thing where it's like, it kind of breaks and it's like, is someone there? Meaning it's aware of mm. the yes. now itself yep. yeah. and also everything around it and the fact that there's going to be other people walking around this place. So whether yes. this is a soul, whether it's an AI, we don't really know yet, so it's a bit hard to judge. But it's just interesting to know these guys have more of a physical conscious rather than just like servers knowing to walk around and things like mm. that. Just going off your uh, point there, Ryan, how you were talking about how they might have a conscience there. It's two points, actually, just come up with another one. Well, the first one is we've never heard from the animatronics, have we? We've always heard oh. from the phone guy or from visuals through the purple man, what happens going on there. We've never seen, apart from the lines in the trailer, you don't know what we've been through. We've already discussed this and it's going to be great when we hear the other animatronics because we're going to get so much more of a story. It's always been fairly one-sided so far, yeah. hasn't it? We've never heard mm -hmm. from the the victims or the murdered yes. children or what these animatronics are so yeah. we can discover their pain how they got into this situation what's happened since then they might even be able mm -hmm. to tell us exactly how they were yeah. brought back to life and yeah. what they've been doing since yeah. if they've just been trapped yeah. in a factory for all these years think how bored you would be you'd be going yeah. insane yeah. and this might be reflected in each one of their personalities we've already seen um 
we've, we've got these lines for Ballora. She sounds very graceful, poetic, as you would imagine a ballerina to be. But take that into contrast with what we suspect to be Ennard, who is torn apart. Yep. He looks a little bit more mm. crazy. So we can perhaps see that in his uh, animations and voice. Maybe he's a little bit more jittery and yeah. his um, yep. words are more broken up and maybe more dark and distorted. And the second yeah. point is, if I remember correctly, in one of the phone calls, forgive me, it was probably Five Nights at Freddy's 3 because we got more background information on them, but maybe it wasn't. But there was calls to do with the animatronics when they heard noise they would go towards someone, wouldn't they? Yes. Whenever yeah, they yeah, heard yeah. noise, the animatronics would go over across to the children. Yeah. I don't know if this was in the original Fred Bear's Diner or if it was um, somewhere else. I really can't remember where it was. But they, yeah. would, they would hear the noise and they would go to that spot because they would assume that there was people there to entertain or to serve or, or w mm -hmm. what have you. So maybe when she's hearing somebody, maybe that's about to set off a cue for her to go yes. and do um, another performance action or a set action action that mm -hmm. our programming has um, dictated her to do. It's just the way she says it. It sounds more like consciousness uh, to me, but I thought we'd add that bad boy in there. Yeah, um, I like yeah. the point what Raz said about the one-sided story, because mm. that's true. We only hear from Phone Guy things what can be complete yeah. bull crap. Because exactly. um, the hide stuff, they clean carpets and stuff to get mm. rid of, rid of yes. any murders or evidence, and they're, they're really like... It could, it could just be all lies, so... I like the fact that if we do get a phone guy or something, he might say stuff like, oh, you're going to be fine, blah, blah, blah. This is a safe place. But then you hear from the animatronics, no, it's not. This is why. Phone guy's a liar. This is why. Yep. Blah, blah, blah. Exactly. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, I reckon so. And another thing I'm just going to throw in there, which might have some relevance or might not, just to get you guys thinking as well, is do you remember in FNAF 1 we used to hear that random song that sounded what everyone said was from a circus? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes. Just going to say that. I'm not going to say anything else. Oh. I wonder what that means. We don't really know. That might need some uh, further research, but yeah. we, we talked, that's interesting. We talked about this before, didn't we? How um, from old locations there's some yep. circus-inspired um, yeah. things. Yep, yep. Because yep. they um, used the old bits and pieces from the old um, establishments yeah. to furnish the new establishments. Well, yeah. they used the animatronics for one, so why wouldn't they use the, the carousel that we see in Five Nights at Freddy's 2 again? Exactly, yeah. exactly, yeah. So we've kind of already touched on this, but we're going to be discussing how the voices of these new animatronics are going to affect the gameplay. Um, we kind of touched on how we're going to get more of the backstory with the animatronics. It's not just going to be a one-sided affair anymore, but how will this affect us when we're actually playing the game? No story, just playing the game. What do you think, boys? Um, I definitely think it will make it more creepy. Yeah. Um, if you remember in Five Nights at Freddy's 1, uh, when Freddy just laughed when he yeah. moved... That oh. was scary. That was yeah. already scary, mm -hmm. and it made yeah. it more tense. So, I think like, wouldn't it be awesome? Like, if you're just roaming around the office or around the location, and you hear it distantly, mm -hmm. like yeah. you hear someone speaking really afar, but then suddenly it gets really close. Maybe like a w an ear whisper. Oh how, God. how scary yeah. would that be? Yeah. Like, yeah. and you just turn around and it's there, and it jump scares you or something. Yeah. Yeah, that reminds that would be me terrifying. of terrifying. Um, that reminds me of the flipping uh, 3D barber shop that used to go around. Yes, like, yes. Yeah, yeah, that, yeah, that would headphones. be amazing if he actually used 3D sounds to go. Oh mm -hmm. my goodness! But like, I was just thinking, like, if the jump scares will have dialogue as well in them, r rather than just screaming at you, maybe they'll scream mm. something at you, like like rides oh, yeah. with strangers with like, you dirty heretic. Yeah, I don't know. yeah. But I don't know, just <laughs> screaming something at you really random. That would be pretty cool. Yeah. Well, you got to think actually, like, because in FNAF 4 he did the running thing that used 3D sound. And Nick's would yep. know which way Fred yes. Bear was coming yep. from. Um, but I, as well, I think what's interesting for me in this one is the fact that this big block of text is like nearly a minute long of spoken dialogue. Mm -hmm. um, it's unlike the other sound effects in the other uh, game files where they're like four or five seconds long. So 48 seconds. It feels like this leads up to maybe a cutscene. So this might mean that we might have cutscenes between each mm -hmm. of the nice yes, or. The other thing that me and uh, other Ryan actually touched on in our video where we analysed this before was we said it might be a case if we go back down in the uh, the elevator every night and this is when we hear this. Yeah. Mm. So that acts as like a cutscene. So rather than every time we die, we have to hear the same phone call again. Mm. It might be a one-time cutscene, then we can just click continue, get straight back into the night and get surviving rather than having to listen to a phone call or something like that okay, again. Mm. Yeah, that's interesting. And it could also be if Scott wanted to add in replayability, he could just add yep. in a different... 
log or a different animatronic oh, yeah, making noise before yeah. every night or after every night or wherever this cutscene will actually exactly. take place. So yep. uh, we, we get more story, like we had to die so many times in Five Nights at Freddy's 2 to get the each of the different death mini games, which actually helped us piece together more of the story than any other game had. And that was dying, yep. which was a great yep. touch. It gave us a bonus for dying. So it, it might work the same way there. But overall gameplay, it's going to be creepy as hell. As you said before, yep. we heard the clunking of animatronic, animatronics moving or Foxy running down the hall or clanking of the vents. But what's scarier than that? Something you can actually interact with. Humans are dangerously scary, but add in the fact that we've got like animatronics which are more powerful than humans that that have potentially have some sort of sentience because they have got um, the souls trapped inside them, so they're these big, powerful beasts that we have no defense against, except mm -hmm. just to hide. So hearing them yep. crawling along the vent, or their voice echoing along the vent, or it depends. Maybe you're moving from location to location every night, so it's slightly different. We've seen so many rooms, we don't know if we actually have access to them every single night, or maybe as the nights go on, you've got one room, second night you've got two rooms, third night you've got three rooms, and we do hear Blora in the third night, for instance, and we are now able to walk about where she is. If we're yeah. able to run from yeah. one side of the room to the other side of the room, do it at the wrong time, because she can obviously hear us, which is a point. She doesn't say anything about seeing. She can hear us because her eyes are closed. If we do it at the wrong time, then she's going to get us. If we somehow yeah. manage to hide halfway or something, and then she's like, what was that noise? Metal Gear Solid style. And then <laughs> then you, you hide, and we can get past yeah. her safely. I think yeah. yep. with this, maybe it's given us some kind of mechanics for her that she's going to be sound-based. Mm -hmm. And... Mm -hmm. Getting back to Five Nights at Freddy's 4, we had footsteps when we moved from one side yeah. of the room to the other, so I think we might be yep. able to click on certain points of, of Ballora's room, and if we make a noise, then she's going to get us. We yeah, are, are uh, already yeah. know that each animatronic has their set um, and mechanics. Yeah. So hers sounds to me like it's going to be... Um, uh, I was going to say orally based, but that's just that's the that's that's just <laughs> spreading our thirty four right there. It's um <laughs> ear based. It's it's hearing yeah. based. Yeah. Um. One quick point as well. Um. Like you said about randomized clips of uh, voices, there could mm. be Easter egg voices yeah. as well. Yeah. Of, uh, yeah exactly that. what I was going to say. Rare yeah. Because if of getting um a clip about something, what we need to yeah. Know. Because I think, like, I think Scott's realised that maybe just giving us the 8-bit minigames, we, the, the community gets so divided amongst these that we yeah. never, ever, ever come to a conclusive exactly. answer. So giving us a verbal version of an yeah. Easter egg, it's one way it's being told to us. Like, we're gonna piece together more of this than just speculate for years and never come to a conclusion yeah. because people think it might be 83, 87, for an example. You guys, mm -hmm. everyone knows exactly what I'm talking about. Just from saying those two numbers. But I think, yeah, definitely the vocals spoken will have a big impact in the Easter eggs and just the, the depiction that everyone in the FNAF com community will be able to derive from it, yeah. hopefully. Yeah. I think all <laughs> in all, to be fair, like the dialogue is just going to add something else to a Five Nights yeah. at Freddy's yeah. game. I mean, it's scary enough without voices, but with these horribly yeah. soothing nice voices coming in it's gonna it's be good gonna, it's gonna be absolutely yeah. intense and terrifying mm. hopefully you guys now know that the scott's latest teaser is a troll surely you do um because if you brighten it up you get some law information yes. about this uh, sister location now it says cancelled due to leaks but that's actually an abbreviation of gas leak so yes. this uh baby's pizza world was uh, shut down due to some gas leaks, but yes. during the night time, someone saw a group of people taking parts from that location and moving it to somewhere else. So what do you yep. guys think about that? Well, I'm not gonna speculate too much on this because this is gonna be safe for next week's, but yep. what I wanna say is a potential game mechanic which can come of this, which I think would work extremely well if done right. So we know that these guys aren't in the Circus Babies pizza world, and it seems like they're gonna be in a warehouse. We've been saying this from day one, this place does not look like an establishment. Yep. We go down, it's two metallic things like that, some kind of testing mechanic facility, yep. probably owned by Afton or some relation to Afton. Yep. Um, so what I was thinking was because we're a technician working there and it still says at the bottom that these guys could be rented out to like parties and things yeah. like that what about if say from night four to five one of these animatronics gets rented out overnight one night baby's all clean the next night she comes back and she's covered in blood mm. like that, mm. that that could be a really good mechanic to the game i think yeah, yeah definitely 
I mean, I'm, I don't know what really what to say. I think people got a little bit um, hurt when w they saw this cancelled <laughs> due to leaks thing. But this is the thing, right? Like, the FNAF community are so good into diving into things, brightening yeah. up the images, looking into the source code. As soon as, like, it says cancelled, no one decides to brighten it up and goes, wow, that's I it know. then, lad. Sorry. That's it. That's the it. FNAF <laughs> is over. That's it. But... Guys, Why would on. it end? Like seriously, how could how could Scott end this? Like, yeah, he's, he's not that stupid. No. Yeah, it is ridiculous. <laughs> it's it's the fact that if you've been, I know a lot of people are new, and Scott's getting new fans to the franchise every single day. But yeah, yeah. The, how many troll stuff has Scott done in the past? Ever since yeah, Five Nights at Freddy's so three, he has been trolling us. So that's like two a year and a half at this point of of trolls yeah. he's done. Whether it's a troll game or or something else. Um. But it, you, you're right, it's crazy to think everybody's analysing every single pixel, yet they ignored this one. Yeah. Just seems a bit, a bit... Oh, I love you guys. You definitely entertain us. You definitely entertain us. <laughs> but um, going back to the, 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 the text that was already there, um, this debate now, which again we'll save for next week, but a lot of people are thinking this might be the ending of no. the whole thing. I don't think it is personally. I think it's the start. It's, it's, it's obviously yeah. setting up the game because... If it wasn't, the trailer would be showing us in some kind of brand spanking new pizza world. Yeah. Um, yes. The the second thing I want to talk about is: is it just animatronics under the tarps? Mm. Hey, that that, that leads to my idea. <clears throat> nice. Here we go. Um, hey, here in, we go. In, in the description, when that got the person who saw this happening, mm -hmm. he said that yeah. he saw a bunch of kids go into that place. Yes, kids, yeah. Yes, right? yes, that's yes, what yes. I no think. Sense, yeah. Right. They're, those kids who might have died there are mm -hmm. possessing these animatronics. Ah, yep. yep, definitely. That's Cause a good, I think cause, yeah, because it makes no sense. Like it's, it wasn't. The, it says the establishment wasn't even open yet. Mm -hmm. Why yeah. the heck were kids in there? Why were kids testing this thing? Yeah, so, I don't exactly. Doing this, like, yeah. what? Well, well, it's just like a, a peer group or, or a, a test group. They bring in the children just to see because it is aimed at children, isn't it? So they want to get their feedback. Mm. Um, and little Jimmy goes in there and says, "Yeah, I love baby." <laughs> little Freddy goes in there and said Ballora was a bit busty for me um, but <laughs> this is where something has happened during this test phase that has led to the events of yes. um, baby and that being trapped down in this this maintenance room or this factory or warehouse or wherever we are so these kids have gone in there are potentially I, I, I'd say over 50% likely to be the animatronics that are possessing these um, these animatronics that was yeah. terribly yeah, yeah. worded but you know what i mean <laughs> well there you go guys that was this week's theory friday once again sorry for the one day delay our schedules didn't meet up but hey it was a really good episode uh, we had a bunch of theories on ballora some game mechanics and the nice little interesting theory about the kids who went into pizza's ba baby's pizza world are actually the possessed animatronics in this game so I really like that theory. I wouldn't have done it alone. These guys are really awesome, thinking up some really cool ideas. So thank you very much for watching, guys. Lots of love, and we'll see you all next week.